great to see so many people who are interested in the Internet of Things. My name is Umri Zeev, and I'm going to talk to you today about smart cities and the story of people, sensors, and some other vegetables. Just, but before we start, let's do a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you uh, have heard of smart cities before? Okay, so great, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so let's uh, get into it. A little bit about myself, um, I'm currently studying for my MBA at Tel Aviv University. Before that, I did my BA in Tel Aviv Academic College in Information Systems. And before that, I was in A200, and I was working in the industry of monitoring and controlling different organizations in Israel and abroad, implementing monitoring solutions. And I also write about smart cities. This is my website over here. You can see it all on the presentation. Uh, you know, I'm a proud Tel Avivian. I like going to the beach, I like traveling the city, ride the telephone, the bike sharing system if you're not familiar with the name. And I don't have a car, I only use public transportation. And I love uh, just, you know, go in the city, have a good time. My fiance loves taking pictures of food and publish it and post it on Instagram. But me, that's not exactly my style. I'm more into posting pictures of electric buses whenever I see one, because there's only one, one only one electric bus in Tel Aviv. But whenever I see it, I'm like, okay, I have to, to stop and take a picture of it, because I love electric buses, and I think this is the future. So this is just something about myself. I want to ask you a question here, and the question, and this is why we're here today, how can we make Tel Aviv a smarter city. Okay, we talk about the Internet of Things, we talk about smart cities, but it's all about technology, but let, let, how do we make our city a smarter city? This is a question that I would like to ask. But before we answer this question, we have to go to the origin of smart cities, where it all started in this unique point in time. It happened in 2008. In 2008, three really interesting things happened. First thing that happened is the financial crisis. Okay, people who were VPs, who were really high brand managers, lost their jobs. They, were, they had their suits in Wall Street and then they were working in McDonald's. Okay, this is because they lost their jobs. The banking and the investment houses, they almost went bankrupt. Almost all of them. Some, some did, not all of them. And these banks, all of their business is based upon one thing, data, information. They don't have a huge stash with gold anymore. It's not like that anymore. It's all data. It's all computers. And they buy computers. They buy technology from who? Yeah, from the tech companies, from IBM and Cisco. So when the financial crisis happened, Cisco and IBM and other technology giants found themselves asking themselves, who are we going to sell to? We're going to go bankrupt ourselves. So they thought about it, and they asked, where's the money coming from? And the money was coming from the government, okay, to the federal bodies, and then eventually to the cities. So IBM and Cisco said, let's take the products that we have for the banking, for IT, let's wrap them, rebrand them, do some fine tuning, and sell them to cities. And this is how smart cities were born with the IBM campaign of Smarter Plan. That's the first thing, the financial crisis. Second thing that happened is urbanization. For the first time in the history of the humankind, more people lived in cities than they lived in rural areas. For the first time, think about it. We used to work the land, we used to you know, take food from the tree, and now we're all living in cities. I know who we're all high tech. We're all employees of high tech lawyers. How, what, what's going to happen? It's very interesting. But it happened for the first time in 2008. People are flocking to the cities. Third thing that happened in 2008, and you should probably know that, for the first time, more devices were connected to the internet than humans, and it is anticipated that by the year of 2020, 30 billion devices 
are going to be connected to the internet. It means your AC, your fridge, your car, and who knows what more is going to be connected to the internet, and those things are going to be talking with each other. So three things happened in 2008. Financial crisis, urbanization, and the internet of things. And this leads us to the next question. So we talk about smart cities. Yes, we have smart, but what is a smart city? And there is no one definition for smart cities. If you look on, for instance, sustainable development, then the UN came up with one definition. But smart cities, you can look at Barcelona, they will say, we are a smart city. London say, we, have, we are a smart city, we have a smart city vision. But who says what a smart city is? So there is no definition. But tonight, we will define for this meetup that a smart city is a city that implements technology in order to improve its service to our citizens and visitors <coughs> while reducing its impact on the environment and working with, uh, efficiently with resources. Okay, we'll use this definition. So this is what IBM did. In 2010, in Rio de Janeiro, there was a terrible disaster. There were mudslides. 400 people <clears throat> were dead. Okay, so 400 people died in that very terrible event. And it, they didn't have, even have a clue that this was happening and coming their way. <coughs> Nobody knew that mudslides are about to happen. So after that event, the mayor of Rio de Janeiro consulted with IBM, and IBM started the Rio Operation Center. It's the biggest city operation center in the world with more than 30 public agencies and service providers from parking, fire department, police, weather, sitting all in one place with huge screens with all the data on them. And then they, start this, they had a new app so that every citizen of Rio de Janeiro can now see if there is a warning for a mudslide, they can go into depth and see weather prediction, uh, weather prediction, sorry, they can log into security cameras and see traffic, everything, all this information in the palm of their hand. So this is one, this is probably the biggest project of smart cities in terms of the, giant, the tech giants in the world. But not only in Rio de Janeiro do we see smart cities. As I said before, smart cities are coming everywhere. You see <coughs> Copenhagen, San Diego, this is from Barcelona, Songdu in South Korea, Kazan, Busius. Cities are coming up with the name smart city. We are a smart city. Why? I, they have many different interests. Okay, but it is happening all around the world. And when we look at the money, the market, what's happening, then this is also very confusing because <coughs> Some companies, such as Navigant Research, for instance, they estimate the market to be about $20 billion in 2020. But a different company, Frost & Sullivan, well-known company, they estimate the market of smart cities to be $1.5 trillion. Probably ask yourself, how come there's such a huge difference between two companies? This is because there is no definition for what a smart city is. Okay, over here you can see, Navigant Research, they define smart city as smart government, smart buildings, smart transport, and smart utilities. For instance, Sullivan define it as smart healthcare, smart infrastructure, energy, security, government. So, but what is in common for both of these is the growth rate. And we're talking about a growth rate of more than 15% a year. So. If I could give you a good recommendation, as investing your money in smart city projects will probably give you good interest. So we talked about cities, we talked about Internet of Things, we talked about what happened before, and now, before we talk and answer how we can make Tel Aviv a smarter city, let's have a look around the world, what people are doing. And let's start with this well-known area called New York. So in New York, many people die from car accidents, and a lot of people die from bicycle accidents, which is something that is 
obviously terrible, and we don't know. We don't want anybody to die. So the New York Police Department (NYPD) started to release a report in PDF format, 30 pages every month, of all the casualties and of in the, and the accidents, all the details of the accident, the severity, who was involved, where it happened. So if you had seen that report, you would be like. No way I'm going to read this 30-page report. I don't even understand what's written over there. But some hacker, some New York hacker, took this report and put everything into a MySQL database. And after he did it, he shared it online, invited some friends, and then they created this heat map where you can see the dangerous areas for bicycle riders in New York. And then they realized that 25% from the of the most terrible uh, accidents of fatalities occur only in 5% of the neighborhoods. So when they understood that, they came to the police and told them, "Listen, we looked at the data over here, over here, and over here, and this is where you where you should focus your efforts on." And then they started talking with the Department of Urban Planning in Manhattan. And now they're all working together, urban planners, urban hackers, and police, to start saving lives. If they take a dangerous uh, corner, street corner, they can start talking about it. What's, what's terrible here? You know, what, what's dangerous? In this? How do we solve this issue? And this is what happened. But the first thing that they needed to do was to open data. A smart city will have smart data, and smart data is open data the public, that the public can work with. We talk about open data. We talk about people. Now let's talk about the environment. The municipality of Amsterdam, about three months ago, they gave 100 smart citizen sensors to the public in a very nice event, gala event, every citizen that came uh, got the smart uh, citizen sensor. What is the smart citizen sensor, you ask yourself? This smart citizen sensor is a Kickstarter project. And you can buy it online for approximately $200, and you can put it in your house, and you automatically start it automatically starts monitoring your CO2 emissions around your area, your uh, the humidity, noise levels, light, everything, and it automatically automatically uploads it to the cloud to a beautiful community called smartcitizen.me, where you can see people from all around the world who share data about their environment. And guess what? Imagine that you have this thing in Tel Aviv. I was looking for an apartment about a year ago. Like everybody who lives in Tel Aviv, that need to look for an apartment every year. So, and I was asking. And then after we got in the apartment, maybe two or three days after, we realized that we were living on top of a kindergarten. Obviously, I realized that on Sunday morning where all the, when all the kids came and there was a lot of noise. But imagine that everybody had, or some of the buildings around had the smart citizen sensors. I could look and see the noise levels, the average noise levels <coughs> around that neighborhood. And guess what? It also, it also has an API, if you, you know, have some, you know, if you know some JavaScript, you can just uh, have this API with, uh, in JSON and start pulling the data. This is a beautiful way to crowdsource information about our environment. Okay, and so we talked about the environment and we talked about people. Now let's talk about how we move in the city. The mo one of the most significant things in, in a city is the way we move in it. And mobility is how we do that. We do that with buses, with bicycles, with cars. But I don't know what about you, as I said, I was, I use public transportation a lot. And in the summer in Tel Aviv, the Mediterranean summer, I sweat a lot when waiting for the bus. In, in the winter, not there are a lot of uh, rainy days, but still I get completely soaked. So in, in a project called Smart Cities Lab in Barcelona, they were trying to solve these problems. They had solar panels insta in, installed in this project, funded by JC Deco, Telefonica, Intel, Admira, which is a local uh, company. 
and they had a wind turbine, and they also added an AC to the station powered by these two renewable energy sources. And not only that, they also had a screen, a touch screen, like a big iPad, where you, where you can just navigate, you know, try and see what is the best route to get from what the place you are to the place you're gonna go, and how they're gonna find, finance this uh, expensive station by putting location-based advertising LCD screens. I mean, obviously, we all know that Google makes a lot of money from advertisements because they know how to direct their advertisements. The same thing here. You have location-based advertising. Think about how much money is being spent on advertisements on bus stations without knowing what's the conversion rate. So with this kind of a solution, you can do that. So these were three examples from the world of how we can make our cities you know, smarter. And now let's go back to Tel Aviv. Every one of you, I, I, I bet, has a lot of knowledge and a lot of capabilities to make a change, to write some code, to do marketing and sale. And if you want to make Tel Aviv a smarter city, there are five things you should do. First, you need to explore. As we did here, we explored. I went into Google, I looked all around the world, I made some phone calls, asked some questions, see what's going on out there. How do they solve environmental issues in Barcelona? What are they doing with public transportation in New York City? What are they doing with smart governance in Dubai? Interesting questions. They are doing amazing things. In Dubai, they're even sending you, sending you your driver license, yes, with a drone, not with a fax. Pretty, pretty intense. So after you explore these amazing things, start working with the data. Get data. As you saw with the NYPD example, data is the key to insights. And insights can lead into a change. So work with this data, make sure you have it, and then invent. Do something lean, uh, I don't know, an application, a web, even a blog where you can share your insights and, and invite people, share it. You know, asking questions, what do you think about it? Can we make Tel Aviv more uh, smarter with this kind of a thing? Share it, let people know about what, what you're interested in, what, what are the problems that you're suffering from in your city? And then, when you have more people interested, repeat. Start again, talk with people from other cities, ask them what do they think of your solution? And do it again and share and come to this community with those solutions. About two weeks ago, I took part in a urban hackathon, first urban hackathon, by the way, in Israel for, for solving urban problems. And it uh, happened, uh, it was hold, held in the Herzliya Acceleration, Acceleration, Accelerator, sorry. In, uh, it's a brand new accelerator in Herzliya. Uh, really recommend it, just go there. And in two days, I joined a group of people who I've never met before. One of them was a 15-year-old designer, the other one was a soldier on a regila, who took a few days off. And another um, a very nice woman who was working in the, in the high tech. And we were thinking about the, all these problems. So we took a bus stations just outside of the place and we started to do some, some mock-ups. And we had a mock-up of a smart bus station where we can take the Ravkov card. It's the, it's the card where you go on the bus with. And you can charge it with NFC with the screen and then navigate how you're going to go from one place to another and get alerts whenever the bus that you need to go on is coming. And of course, location-based advertising, I'm going to finance it. So this is just a mock-up, but it, it looks kind of good, kind of real. People were sure, where, where is it? They went outside and we won first place. So that was fun. So I just think this is the kind of solutions that we need. When you go to a bus station in Tel Aviv, you see mainly soldiers and older people, and they need those kind of solutions. They're not the ones who's going to use, or are going to use Move It and, or Waze or other solutions. They really need it. So what you, what you need to take from here is those five steps. And you need to feel that you can do something. And I'm trying to do that. I'm working on a project called the Smart Cities Lab, where people come and talk about the problems they have in cities and try to solve them. And I'll be more than happy to talk more about it. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. One, two questions.